everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at this one-to-one -one function that's just defined by ordered pairs. Now, if you want, I don't know that you, you don't actually need to do this, but here, let me make a little, oops, hold on. Let me move this back up. I can get control of my iPad and my life. Yeah, right. Um, that was supposed to be funny. I don't know if that tracks over the internet. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could say, well, negative three, two, there's an ordered pair. And again, you don't really need to graph this. I just like doing this stuff. Four, five might be up here. Seven, four might be here. And then, ooh, 10. Gosh, this is not to scale. This would be 10. <laughs> and then we'll just put 19 here. So let me go ahead. And this was two. This was five. All right, 10, 19. Again, I don't know that that is really necessary, but basically I have a function, and it is technically a function because it passes the vertical line test of just four dots. And so what I also know here is I could say that f of negative three is two. I could say f of four is five, if we want to use function notation. f of seven is four, and f of 10 is 19, right? And the only reason I'm putting that there is because they ask us for f inverse of four. So what happens in this case is we're saying what, what y value actually, or I should say what x value gets mapped to four in the original function, right? So this is, if it's an input in f inverse, it's the same as being the output in f. So what I mean by that is if I want to look for the output in f, my original function, which I have these ordered pairs for, look at the outputs. You had a two. You had an output of 5, you had an output of 4, and an output of 19. And I really want to emphasize, you hear the output of 4, right? So if it was an input into the inverse function, it's equivalent to being an output in the original function. Well, the output in my original function that was 4 was paired up with 7, right? We had this ordered pair 7, 4. And again, this is on my original function, and let me color code this. So if I went to my inverse function, all of these ordered pairs would change, would change order. Literally, this would have been 2, negative 3, this would have been 5, 4, this would have been 4, 7, and this would have been 19, 10. And I could have graphed them if you wanted to, right? You would have 2, negative 3, right? You would have, here you would go 5, 4. Right, then you would go four, seven. So I would go four, I don't know, seven would be something like that up there. And then I would go way over here, 19, 10. It doesn't really look that great because it's only four ordered pairs, but it is technically reflected over the line y equals x. That's how we always graphically find inverses. But with all of that shenanigans that I'm saying, ultimately, all I'm looking for is this ordered pair, right? What X value gave me a Y value of four. Well, seven got me to four, so that's my answer. All right, so let me give you one follow-up because I, I know that this can be confusing, but let's say I asked you something like F inverse of 19. If, you asked, if I asked you for F inverse of 19, you would tell me that was 10 because in the original function, 10 got mapped to 19, so in the inverse function, 19 gets mapped to 10. All right, so if F of 10 is 19, then F inverse of 19 is 10. And that's all that's, that's getting at. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.